Okay, so it is absolutely persisting down rain here at the moment. Um, so I hope you can hear me all right. Um, now, I've just started working on the exterior of the pulse rifle Nerf Blaster and have started with sanding down uh, the Nerf logo. Um, the section here that had all the warnings, whoop, the section here that had the warnings, etc., um, and up here uh, have been sanded smooth, but I'm going to have to fill in the recesses. So I'm going to fill those and then uh, sand them back smooth. Sanded off all the paint, uh, de the paint embellishments on the, the magazine well part. Um, so just going around doing all that, done that on both sides, and then we'll take the shroud part section off. Um, just if I haven't mentioned it previously, what I'm hoping to do with this is uh, put in a larger speaker, um, a little amplifier on that speaker so that it makes it much louder than what it is standard. Um, I have a little voltage adjustment board that I can use to regulate the voltage to go to the amplifier, etc. Um, probably going to use a MOSFET, uh, which is like an electronic relay, to bypass the mechanics, the, the main electrics of the actual blaster. Uh, to supply directly from the LiPo battery to the flywheels. That way the flywheels will get maximum sort of um, RPMs, etc. to try and give us uh, the, the highest possible um, um, velocity, dart velocity, um, and uh, upgrade the motor in the pusher so that we get a little bit more, a little bit higher cyclic rate as well. Um, We'll have to, once we have a look inside, we'll look at the switching and what have you. We may keep the standard switching, we may replace it with other switching. Uh, I'm thinking about putting in a switch so that you can actually switch off the motors so that you can pull the trigger and have the sounds but no blaster rev up, etc. So that's another possibility. Um, but once I sort of have it all apart and what have you, I'll, I'll work out exactly how what I want to do so um, stick with us and we'll continue on with the build okay so I started doing the pull down um, which is pretty straightforward you just don't do all, all the screws on the outside of the shroud only and then the shroud will come apart in two parts you've just got to be careful with this circuit board that's lodged at the top now I um, have put in a voltage regulator or it's a buck so you can actually adjust voltage up and down so i've put that in so that it uh, drops the voltage of the lipo down to six volts to run the internals um, uh, i did try putting on a, sm a small amplifier as well um, and tried a few different speakers and none of them really make a significant difference um, or much of an improvement um, I did settle on this little speaker, a little um, metal domed speaker, um, which gives you a little bit more volume um, and seems to handle it a little better. Um, I'll just connect it up and give you a quick demo. Okay, so now the LiPo is connected. Obviously, it's showing dash dash because there's no magazine inserted, but you get the grenade launcher. A little bit louder not a great deal um, so what I've been trying to think of with this is how do we enable the sounds but not the motors etc etc so I'm trying to work out the best way of doing that obviously with the trigger at the moment it's locked because there's a locking mechanism in there so that your rev trigger has to be depressed in order to um, in order to be able to pull the main trigger um, so that's what means that your motors have to be engaged in order to get the sound and of course your motors scream so um, it you can't hear the sound so um, I'm gonna have a look at whether the pusher needs to be operational in order for the counter to work etc or whether it's uh, just a like a timed countdown um, so once I get to uh, pull it apart and have a look at the circuitry and whatever and learn a little bit more 
I'll um, I'll let you know what the situation is. But um, even just doing this mod, even just a lipo with a voltage regulator um, and a speaker upgrade, um, well, you don't even have to do the speaker upgrade if you don't want to. Just doing this, obviously, the current is that much better than the standard C size batteries that it seems to be revving a lot harder than what it was before I've even replaced the motors. Let me just pop the magazine in and I'll rev it up and you can hear what I mean. Okay, so with the magazine in, you get your rev, your counter goes up to 10. Um, but now listen to these motors. So they seem to be humming uh, a lot a lot more and a lot quicker than what they were previously like to get up to full revs it's pretty quick and the cyclic rate seems to be a little bit faster too if you see how quickly it counts down in the fire rate so i think even just doing the lipo mod is a worthwhile thing i think you probably find you get more fps a higher rate of fire, etc. And you've got a rechargeable battery. So even just doing that would be worthwhile. Um, I'm still going to obviously press forward and I want to replace the motors with the fangs revamped because they're a hell of a lot higher. Um, RPMs are on the same voltage input. Um, so they'll give us even an even better uh, FPS reading. So, all right, um, I'll uh, press forward. We're going to crack this open shortly and then we'll um, we'll have a look and see what we discover. All right, so having undone all the screws, um, there's this orange tip on the barrel that has to come off, which I literally just uh, put a slot in and then um, snapped with a screwdriver to get it off. And now that's out of the way. Now we should be able to open up the two halves and have a look inside. Oh, well, that's extremely convenient. Basically, the top half lifts off and uh, everything is contained in this bottom side. So, let's see all our internals. And switch in there for. So... We'll have a closer look and examine it and see what we can change. Okay, so in having a bit of a look, it's a fairly complex little setup. Um, this is purely just a rev trigger. That's all it does. Um, you've got a fire trigger here, which uh, turns your your pusher. Um, there's a, a lock, which is on your, your and, and it's also a reset that's on your magazine insert. So when your magazine goes in, it resets the counter and shows that there's a magazine in. Now there's a little switch up the top here and a little tongue. Now that is actually what triggers your soundboard. So when you've got a magazine in, this is going to be very tricky with one hand, but if you have a magazine in and that gets depressed, that pushing in and then releasing is what gives you your sound and countdown. So that's actually your sound trigger there. So which we might be able to use that to our advantage. Um, the only pain they ask with that means is that the actual pusher has to cycle in order to get your count down and your so and your and your sound. Um, so the, the the pusher needs to run. So you could disengage your flywheels so you don't get the noise of the flywheels, um, and just you just get your pusher the sound of your pusher. It's not ideal, but it looks like that might be all we can do. The other thing I wanted to do, which I didn't mention earlier, was I want to put in a muzzle flash mod as well. So I want to put an LED up the front here, um, and I can run that back to the same switching mechanism, hopefully, so that as it uh, as the switch cycles, it 
uh, puts light through to the LED or puts a power to the LED and the LED lights up with each cycle as well. <sighs> Fairly complex this thing, but um, look, we'll work it out. Um, what I might do is try and basically disconnect the flywheels from the circuit and run them via their own separate wiring from the rev trigger direct from the battery so basically it's its own circuit so when you rev it up it's basically feeding directly from the battery to the flywheels so that it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the circuitry um, in which case then I should be able to put a switch on it um, so that it disconnects it and everything else will still operate as per normal. There is a little lock here, which, um, so that your rev trigger has to be depressed in order for your trigger to pull. Um, so we might that, and then that way you don't have to rev up the motors in order to pull the trigger. Um, actually, well, if we do that, then, then we don't need to um, put a switch on it because we'll be able to actually just run the pusher separately. The only pain in the ass with that is if you've got a magazine full of darts, you're going to be pushing darts into non turning flywheels, which is not ideal. Hmm. Yep, this is going to be a pain either way. Um, Unless I can think of some other way of triggering the firing sound mechanism. You know what I do want to do, and that's going to be easy, is get rid of this barrel and replace it with a section of clear worker barrel. So you can see straight through your vents at the front there and you get your guide up to the point and then we're going to remove this bit at the front here anyway and open it out so it looks a bit more screen accurate so that bit's easy and this piece here um, I believe is fairly simple as well that should lift out you get your front piece there there's that and We'll have a look at that. There's an air restrictor in there, so we will sort off the air restrictor and um, and see what else we can do with this as well. Um, probably larger spring, improve the O-ring seal, and what have you with that. Um, yeah, all right. We'll um, I'll nut it out, and as I work out what I'm doing, I'll uh, I'll come back and let you know exactly. All right, so have a look at this. This is this is pretty neat. Um, I wish all Nerf blasters were like this. So this is this is the the main tube here. There's a little I don't know if you can see it if I can focus in on a little twist lock. So you can literally just twist that and pull it apart, and then pull the drop the actual air restrictor out. Uh, I'll keep the dart post. Um, just for aligning the actual dart and what have you, and for keeping it from pushing in too far. Actually, maybe I should get rid of that as well. Yeah, we'll get rid of that as well. Uh, and then you can just twist lock it back together, and there you go. You're now fully vented, ready to rock and roll. How cool is that? All right. Um, so yeah, this air restrictor and dart post gone out of that. Yeah, be able to load, be able to load it right flush so that it's not sticking out at all, etc. Too, that'd be good. All right, um, we'll pull this out and have a look for a spring. See what we got. Okay, so. Yeah, the first part of that was quite easy, but uh, from here on it's it's not so easy. Um, had to manipulate this to get it out, basically twist and hook this around to get it out of the actual slide. Um, the head is like clipped in with a one-way sort of clip 
system sort of thing. So I actually unwound the spring off the rear of the plunger rather than trying to take the head off. Um, they have got a dead space uh, filler in the head itself. The O-ring seal wasn't too bad. I've just given it like two, two wraps with um, Teflon tape under the O-ring just to give it a little bit better seal. Um, now I'm going to go have a look and see what I've got spring-wise that might have a bit more oomph than this. Um, I'm thinking maybe a Vulcan spring. I'll have to see what I've got though. I'll, um, I'll check it out and I'll come back. Okay, so what I found was a 8 kilo swamp fire spring. So, um, and it seems to be the right sort of diameter and length. So we'll um, see if we can get that fitted.